This is Story Recapped. Today I'm gonna explain an adventure, horror, and fantasy film called The Brothers Grimm. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. A mother tends to her sick daughter and waits for her son to return with money for a doctor. However, when her son Jake arrives, he reveals that he exchanged their cow for magic beans, thinking it'd make his sister better. His older brother Will scolds him and tackles him for believing in fairy tales. Fifteen years later, in French-occupied Germany, grown-up Will and Jake arrive at Karlstadt. At the mayor's office, townspeople gather as a man recounts a ghost encounter. The mayor explains that the old miller's wife was burned for witchcraft a century ago. Jake states the proper disposal of a witch's remains as he documents the man's account in his book. Will assures everyone that they'll help, though exercising the witch will be difficult and expensive. They're the town's last hope, so when Will gives an expensive quotation, the mayor accepts. At the mill, the brothers and the miller prepare for the exorcism. They instruct the miller to hide behind a shield just before a menacing shriek signals the witch's arrival. They face gusts of wind and brace for battle. The doors shut, and the mill trembles. An apparition appears, and Will brandishes a sword but is knocked back. Jake fires his crossbow, misses, and is also thrown back. Will uses a crucifix, but it bursts into flames. Jake readies his crossbow, and Will pulls a revolver, but they aim their weapons at each other due to the witch's control. Jake breaks away in time and hits the apparition. The ghost shrieks and turns into a pile of serpents. The brothers slice it up, and Jake puts a piece inside a velvet sack for the miller to bury. The man pays them and happily leaves. With the brothers left behind, the ghost reappears and knocks them down. The witch is just a man in a costume, Hidlik. His partner, Bunst, controls the machinery they've set up. After paying the actor's fees, Will instructs them to set up to portray a bridge troll in another town as their next con. He offers Jake his half of the bounty, but asks if he'd rather have magic beans. Ashamed, Jake says he'd take the beans. In the woods, a girl in a red hood collects berries. When she notices a presence, she flees. A tree moves on its own to block her, but she keeps running. Just before she reaches the village, something captures her, leaving her red cloak hanging from a tree. At a pub, Jake gets drunk as Will dances with two women. The celebration halts when French troops arrive. Jake annoys the French, but Will distracts them and pulls Jake away to meet the women he'd been dancing with. Jake is uninterested, so Will leads both women upstairs. Unbeknownst to them, a man named Cavaldi watches them. That night, Cavaldi and his men wake the brothers. Will and Jake are dragged out of the room and into the courtyard, where Cavaldi's men wait. Jake is tackled to the ground, and Will runs but gets captured as well. They are brought to French General de la Tombe, where they're tried for fraud. The brothers defend themselves, but Cavaldi reveals that Hidlik and Bunst, whose heads are encased in glass boxes filled with snails, already snitched on them. The brothers are accused of kidnapping nine girls from the town of Marbaden. Will denies this, so Cavaldi lowers Hidlik and Bunst into a smoldering cauldron. The brothers plead their innocence and beg to spare their friends. De La Tombe stops Cavaldi in time and agrees that the brothers didn't do it, but con artists like them might have. De La Tombe offers them amnesty once they find the kidnappers and return the children. In the woods, young Han searches for the missing girls. He scatters breadcrumbs on the path, which the crows eat. His sister Greta is afraid as Hans keeps going farther. Eventually, Greta gets lost. A tree branch snatches her shawl, and Greta runs after it. The shawl gets stuck in a stone wall with strange markings. When Greta pulls it, swarms of bugs spill out. A shadowy figure appears behind her, and Greta screams. Will and Jake arrive in cages at Marbaden with Della Tomb's men. The villagers are hostile towards them, even when Jake says they'll search for the lost children. No one recognizes the brothers Grimm, until a girl named Sasha identifies them as famous killers of trolls and giants. Later, Hans narrates how the forest captured Greta. Others agree and claim their daughters were taken too. A mother clutching her daughter's red cloak tells the brothers that the culprit is a wolf capable of flight. Jake documents the details, while Will guesses such beasts could be created with machinery. The people blame the French occupation for triggering the forest's curse. Will calms them and assures them that salvation is at hand. When he asks for a guide in the forest, the villagers suggest the cursed trapper, Angelica. At Angelica's house, they find her skinning a rabbit, which disgusts both Will and Jake. Will expresses their need for a guide, but she claims that she doesn't care about the village. She tosses the knife she's holding and startles Cavaldi. He overreacts and throws a knife at another dead rabbit on the wall. Will asks if she's aware that ten girls are missing, and Angelica reveals her sisters are among them. 
Suspicious of Cavaldi, Angelica asks who he is. So Cavaldi introduces himself as an Italian master torturer. They enter the woods and soon reach a dense area where Angelica says animals don't go beyond. They prepare to go on foot, and Angelica observes that the men didn't bring weapons. Will operates a strange device and explains that they work with different tools. As they advance, a man wielding a silver axe secretly trails behind. They reach a tower in the middle of the forest built by the Christians. Angelica notes that it was cut down, but it grew back. Will, noticing the crows, questions Angelica's claims that animals don't venture this far into the forest. Angelica clarifies that animals don't drink water from the spring, so the soldiers drinking there spit out the water. While they investigate, Jake senses something unnatural about the place, and Cavaldi agrees. Angelica shares that the Christians invaded and burned the forest people in their caves. She adds that they were the lucky ones, because a year later, the plague came. Will suggests searching the tower, but Angelica claims there's no way in. She remembers when her family often went there. Her father told her about a queen who was incredibly beautiful, but also vain and selfish. On her wedding day, the plague arrived, and the king was the first to die. The queen locked herself in the tower, but the disease spread by air, so she soon fell ill and lost her beauty. Meanwhile, the man with the axe feeds spiders to Jake's horse. Cavaldi tries to reach a golden ring from one of the crypts surrounding the tower, but crows fly out and startle him. He looks up to a murder of crows on a withered tree. Near nightfall, they decide to head home. Angelica tells them of a different way back and never trust the trees. She picks up a toad, asks it to show the way, and licks the toad's skin, much to the men's disgust. Despite Will's skepticism, she correctly leads them back. Jake's horse acts strangely, but they all return to the village unharmed. Will declares that they'll return tomorrow, but Angelica refuses. Jake convinces her that he believes there's power in that place. Angelica admits that her father used to take their family there, but he died and was taken by wolves. Angelica reveals her sisters were the first to disappear, and asks Will how they'll save them, but Will doesn't answer. She resolves to search on her own. That night, a girl is lured to the stables by Jake's cursed horse. After catching her in a web, the horse swallows her whole and runs for the woods. As Will and Jake block it, they see the girl lodged in its throat. It gets past them, but Angelica gives chase. In the forest, vines throw Angelica off her horse. Will and Jake follow, but moving trees obstruct them. Meanwhile, Angelica untangles herself and faces a large wolf. Eager to avenge her father, Angelica fires an arrow, but the wolf dodges and knocks her over. Cavaldi and two soldiers follow them into the woods, but Cavaldi gets separated. His men find Will and Jake, but the trees attack them. One soldier is lifted to the treetops, and the other gets dragged by his feet. The brothers try to save him, but a root impales him through the mouth. Angelica pursues the wolf but soon runs out of arrows. Angelica holds its stare, recognizing its eyes. The wolf only growls and leaves. Will, Jake, and Angelica regroup in a clearing. Jake believes there's real magic in the forest, but Will insists on a rational explanation for the events. Cavaldi arrives and captures them, blaming them for his man's death. The next day, Cavaldi interrupts De La Tombe's lavish feast to report that the soldiers are dead. At the dungeons, De La Tombe berates Cavaldi for embarrassing him to his guests. Cavaldi defends himself by theorizing that German soldiers used the girls as bait to lure and kill the French. He makes the brothers confess by leveraging Angelica, who's trapped in another torture device. Spinning blades slowly lower to crush Angelica, so Will tries to discredit Cavaldi, telling De La Tombe that Cavaldi panics easily. Cavaldi denies this but gets spooked by a kitten. As a last resort, the brothers go with Cavaldi's story and offer to help Della Tomb stop the German soldiers. Della Tomb spares them but threatens execution if they fail. The group returns to Marbaden with Hidlik and Bunst. Will presses Jake to escape, but Jake wants to help Angelica. He recognizes the story about the queen who used enchantments to gain eternal life and surmises that the queen is still in that tower. When Jake promises to save Angelica's sisters, Will lashes out at him for believing in fairy tales and then sends him away. Angelica accuses Will of being afraid, and he admits that he's terrified for his brother's life. Angelica sympathizes and comforts him. Jake walks in and misunderstands the gesture, so he heads to the forest with the actors. Will follows while Cavaldi takes Angelica hostage to ensure their brother's return. Hidlik and Bunst help Jake assemble a catapult to enter the tower. Will finds them, and Jake snaps at him for taking whatever he wants, including money and Angelica. He claims that they've finally found a real folktale, and he means to see it through. Jake wants his brother to believe him, so Will agrees to help. 
As they find a better way to enter the tower, Hidlik and Bunce chicken out and leave. Meanwhile, Sasha saves a crow that fell in the well. The crow attacks and covers her with mud. Sasha wipes them off and loses her face. Mud from the well materializes into a humanoid figure and chases after Sasha. Cavaldi gets distracted by the commotion, allowing Angelica to escape and reach Sasha. She hands the girl to Cavaldi and shoves them inside while she fights the mud figure. She cuts it, but it quickly reforms. It snatches Sasha from Cavaldi and absorbs her. It transforms into a gingerbread man and jumps back into the well. Jake scales the tower using ropes and a pulley with Will's help. From his new vantage point, he counts 12 crypts around the tower. Jake enters through the window and finds the queen's crown, throne, and book of spells. On the ground, Will follows Angelica's example and licks the toad to find the way back. Will notices a nearby pond where Sasha's unconscious body surfaces. As he reaches out to her, he hears a wolf's growl. He hides as the wolf transforms into a human. After the man carries Sasha out, she awakens and lays in one of the crypts. The man magically gives her glass slippers and pricks her finger for a drop of blood. Meanwhile, Jake finds the queen's corpse. A crow drops a pebble in her mouth, reviving her. Jake panics and runs into a mirror. In its reflection, the beautiful queen appears and seduces Jake. The werewolf attacks Will with the axe, throwing it and summoning it back to his hand while the queen tempts Jake with earthly desires. Will throws a rock into the tower to call Jake for help and hits the mirror. Jake breaks away from the spell. Using the queen's long hair as a harness, Jake jumps out and lands on top of the werewolf, saving Will. Will takes Sasha while Jake uses the silver axe to force the trees back as they escape. They return Sasha to the village, but they find her not breathing. Jake deduces that the queen intends to absorb the girl's youth and beauty during the eclipse happening that night. Sasha was the twelfth girl that would complete her spell. Since they got Sasha, the queen still needs one more. Jake instructs everyone to flee, but the general and his troops arrive. Cavaldi greets the general, wearing the brother's phony armor. Della Tomb reveals their brother's lies to the villagers, presenting headlicks and bonds to decapitated heads, who confess to the crimes. Della Tomb orders the brothers to be burned along with the forest. As they're arrested, Angelica notices the axe when Jake puts it down. The brothers are tied and put beside a pile of kindling. De La Tomb tosses Jake's book in the pile, telling them that their stories won't be remembered. Cavaldi surreptitiously apologizes to the two before the soldiers start the fire. The villagers cry as flames engulf the forest. Using the axe, Angelica secretly frees the brothers. They run deeper into the woods, but are separated by burning debris. The wolf finds Angelica and transforms into a man whom Angelica recognizes as her father. The previous winter, the queen took him and made him her henchman. Will and Jake save Angelica from her father, but she falls into a pond and disappears into the water while the wolf leaves. Will retrieves the axe, and Jake warns that Angelica is the twelfth girl. With all girls captured, the queen extinguishes the forest fire with her breath. De La Tomb is incensed, and when he discovers that the brothers didn't burn, he walks into the forest. The brothers rush to the tower as the man deposits an unconscious Angelica in the last crypt. Crows carry the man to the tower as the eclipse begins. Inside, he gives the queen a vial containing the girl's blood. Will and Jake try to get Angelica, but De La Tomb, his valet, and Cavaldi catch up to them. When Cavaldi refuses to execute the brothers, De La Tomb shoots him instead. Will engages in a sword fight with De La Tomb using a flagpole, while the valet corners Jake. Jake throws the axe and misses, but the axe flies back and kills the valet. Jake tries climbing using the queen's long hair, but crows thwart it, so he prepares the catapult instead. Will throws the burning crucifix at De La Tomb and impales him with a flagpole. He pushes the dying De La Tomb against the ruin, and the structure falls on the catapult, launching Jake into the tower. The queen orders Angelica's father to finish the spell, and pins Jake to the wall with magic. Meanwhile, Cavaldi awakens, having been saved by the phony armor. Will climbs a tower using the queen's hair still tied around Jake's waist. However, the queen sends him flying to his brother and makes them fight in mid-air. As the spell finishes, the crypts open, revealing all the missing girls. The queen reverts to her youthful beauty, so Will encourages Jake to finish the story and lets Jake stab him. The queen enchants the dying Will and makes him crawl to her feet. Using a metal stake from the werewolf's chest, the queen stabs Will and makes him her new henchman. Before his fate is sealed with her kiss, Jake smashes the mirror with the axe. The mirror breaks, and with it, the queen crumbles into shards. Free from sorcery, Angelica's father grabs a mirror fragment and jumps out the window. 
Will, still enchanted, goes after Angelica's father. They both hit the ground and completely shatter the magic mirror. The queen explodes, and the tower crumbles. Cavaldi pulls Will away from falling rubble. Jake survives the tower's collapse, and Cavaldi helps him out of the debris. Jake sees Will and pulls out the queen's enchanted stake. When Will doesn't wake, Jake mourns. Before the eclipse passes, Cavaldi recalls a childhood tale and tells Jake there's still time. They find Angelica, and Cavaldi instructs Jake to wake her with a true love's kiss. Jake kisses Angelica, and she awakens. The other girls also come back to life, and Angelica reunites with her sisters. Jake runs back to Will, but he's still unconscious. Before Jake kisses him, Will complains that he shouldn't do it. Jake catches on to his meaning and has Angelica kiss Will instead. They all return to the village, and the people rejoice with the girl's return. Cavaldi asks to keep the armor that saved his life, and hands over Jake's book, which he saved from the fire. In gratitude, Angelica kisses both brothers and declares that they're always welcome in town. Will and Jake discuss changing professions, presumably to write their adventures into fairy tales. As they celebrate, a crow flies away, carrying a shard of the queen's blinking eye. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.